What's going on, Badger fans? Um, we're going to talk. We got Curtis coming on the show. Was last year's Portal Editions a success or failure? I think Badger fans may be looking at that in a different way than I am. Plus, get his thoughts on all the linebackers coming in and his thoughts on the portal in general. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Really do appreciate you tuning in and continuing this journey as we talk Badgers. And it's, it's awesome to have you here. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. Terms and conditions to apply. All right, let's get Curtis on here. Not his first time on the show, certainly. Um, man, I, I did say before the show, if my power goes out, if people can hear it, it's, it's I'm in that rainstorm right now, but hopefully it holds out. I want to start here, man, because I think this is interesting. I think a lot of people, I see this comment talking about last year's portal edition saying, I'm not going to get excited this year because last year didn't work out or last year. We didn't get the success. We thought we would. How do you feel looking back a year at last year's portal before we talk about this one? Well, uh, thanks for having me on again, Ryan. I mean, you know, I think just to kind of start off, um, looking back at myself, even uh, thinking about it, I think we all got kind of caught up in the hype train. Um, we were all super excited. Everything was brand new. We were getting all these new quarter, you know, it was kind of him. Uh, that I can remember when we looked at recruiting battles, you know, that weren't a lineman or maybe an outside linebacker, we genuinely won some, you know, the people we wanted. Like the first, it all started with, you know, Nick Evers signing him, a guy that, you know, I personally never thought we would be able to sign a quarterback, you know, a, a four or four, you know, quarterback who can chuck it a mile, athlete, went from, from Oklahoma, you know, I think that got us super excited. And then we saw, oh man, we can sign two more quarterbacks. And oh look, CJ Williams, uh, all American receiver. We've never had that. So we we all got really excited. And I think we all kind of took it and ran with it. And I think, you know, kind of with the power of retrospect and you know, the power of hindsight, I think we can look back and say, you know, these weren't moves that were going the moves that define this program moving forward. I think really what we did last year was we, you know, when the staff got here, they, they were all new, they were first time working together. They all kind of looked around and said, Okay, where do where are there holes that are noticeable on this roster? And and what do we need to do to fill them? And basically they said, we don't have enough wide receivers. We don't have enough quarterbacks. You know, um, we need some guys here or there, maybe some more uh, defensive backs. And and uh, we're just going to get this thing to a full roster and we'll, we'll figure it out along the way. I think that makes a lot of sense. It, it felt like a cobbled together approach with so many things going on. And even then, though, like what's the goal of the portal, right? Is, is it to make the team better? Well, they got better through the portal last year. You know, maybe it wasn't a bunch of home runs, but – they certainly were better off because they got those guys in than if they hadn't. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I think, I think the way you, you got to look at it is um, you know, what was the, what was their objective? I think one of the things we tended to overlook last year is most of their portal additions were, were younger guys, you know, the red shirt, freshmen, sophomores, red shirt sophomores, guys that got a couple of years to, to stick with the program and build. I know multiple times uh, the coach staffs emphasized they want to build this team organically, you know, through recruiting over time. And I think you see what that can what can be accomplished from that last night in the in the championship game with Michigan. That's a team that's been built over the last three, four, five years. That wasn't a team of uh, five star guys who you know has been on the roster for a couple of years and are just so good they make it to the title. That was a team that's been uh, by the iron steel of Ben Herbert. I'm gonna not I'm gonna rue the day forever we let him go. But because well, uh, some Badger fans may not even know that name. Yeah, so Ben Herbert was actually when my uh, my uncle played football from 06 to, to 10. And, um, you know, when Bielema was the coach, he was the head strength and conditioning coach. And I thought at the time he was the best strength coach in the country. Watch, they had a couple of podcasts or like uh, YouTube videos back in like 2010 when that was still kind of a new thing. And um, those teams, you know, if you watch Michigan last night, go back and watch some highlights from the 2010, 11, and 12. Our defense wasn't on that level. But if you watch how our offense played, we moved the ball as – better than they did on the ground. And, and and I think, you know, I'll say that that 2010 year probably was the best Wisconsin team that I've ever seen. Um, again, watch watch how their line plays. It, it, it looks the same as Michigan's did. That's all I'll say about that. Um, kind of going back to the portal from last year, though, you know, um, you know, I think a lot of the guys are younger. And I think when we when you think about was this portal a success, I think a lot of it kind of falls on the shoulders 
rightfully or not, of Tanner Mordecai. You know, he unfortunately didn't have the, the best season ever. And I think that was kind of where, you know, the most most noticeable position quarterback, I think that's kind of where you see that. Well, it didn't really work. Um, so maybe the portal wasn't a success. But I think moving into next year, you look at what we have coming back. You know, we have Will Pauling coming back. He's probably going to be top receiver. We got a young Quincy Burroughs who's going to be good. I think C.J. Williams is going to improve. Bryson Green's going to be one of our starting receivers. Then you look at our quarterbacks. We're bringing in Tyler Van Dyke this year, but I'm not guaranteed. I'm not sure that he is for sure the starter. So you look, you know, you got a um, a Braden Locke or maybe a Nick Evers takes a jump. You know, you're, you're starting to see where that that vision that they had last year will come through, and it wasn't necessarily going to be last year. Perhaps it's going to be down the road. Yeah, that's a good point too with the younger players, like. It, it, you still have Nizer Forkren on this roster. Uh, Michael Mack will be your next year. Jeff Petroisky is at least a depth guy at the linebacking spot. Like There's pieces that are going to continue to develop. I, I think Quincy Burroughs has a chance to be a really good receiver for this team. Mm-hmm. And suddenly you look back, you're like, oh, that was a great pickup in the portal, but he didn't really play last year. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think it was good. I think your point on Mordecai is important, too, because there is opportunity cost in the portal. You know, like because you got Mordecai, you didn't get somebody else. And mm-hmm. you could look at that as, as a bit of a failure on that front. But overall, like the team was better because they hit the portal. And I don't think bringing it back to where we are now, I don't think Badger fans should be so gun shy about these additions and not being excited because maybe last year let them down. Yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, one thing to keep in mind, too, is that last year this was all new to the staff in terms of the players who they had on the roster, what the team looked like. They just went through a, a very up and down year, a very tough year by Fickle's old admission, the toughest year he's ever coached. And I think – that kind of crucible really sort of solidifies, okay, who's really on the boat and who are we trying to build this thing around? And once we figure that out, where do we really actually need someone? Because now we know, right? We know that maybe our linebackers weren't necessarily the right group of people to be able to to, to tackle, you know, guys in the flat or in, in space. Maybe we need some more athleticism on the back end, you know? And, and, and so that's when they make that a priority. And I think that um, I, I'm not going to take credit for this. I saw this uh, a tweet from uh, a different podcast, Buck Around, a uh, great podcast. Um, they had mentioned that last year, you look at the transfer portal, uh, the staff really used it to, to fill the holes in the roster. Whereas this year, it seems like they're really using it to improve the roster. And so I think you're going to see a little bit of, of, of growth next year. Um, and, and we could talk about expectations on the road, but I think that you know, one thing I, I, I would tell Badger fans is that, you know, if, if you're worried about what they're doing in the portal this year, just ask yourself, if it was any other coaching staff, would you want them doing anything different? Than they're doing now yeah it's it's a good point too and it should they should be able to be more targeted now because they know the roster better they know the players better and to your to your point you brought this up they know the weaknesses and the holes better and so they should be more targeted i think that was a good point that was brought up all right we're gonna take a quick break we're gonna come back and i know on the discord curtis and i have gone back and forth with linebackers um I, I want to talk about all, all the, that group coming in, what where his feeling is on it, how do they all fit in, and kind of how they fit into the bigger scheme of this all. We're going to do that next on Lockdown Badge. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at LinkedIn. And I've mentioned this before. All of us go – most of us go professional in something other than sports. I certainly did. Um, it took me a while to get there. But LinkedIn Jobs is the number one place to get to all your professional needs for a hiring manager, find the right people. If you're looking for a job, find the right job. They have screening tools to keep people who have no business interviewing for a job out of the office, out of your hair, out of your time. It saves you time. It saves you money. They are the number one source for hiring as consistently rated by other small businesses. And right now, there's a great offer for hiring managers. Help, they will help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockdownCollege. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockdownCollege. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, let's let's get Curtis back in. Um, I'm going to put up a, a banner at the bottom here, Curtis, with just all of the kind of guys we've gotten so far. Oh, yeah, I was trying to move them off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it down here for you. Now, this list is missing the long snapper just because it wouldn't fit. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to throw shade at special teams matter. Um, his last name is Pfeiffer. I think it's like Clayton Pfeiffer, Carson Pfeiffer. Um, hey, I was at I was at the Big Ten Championship game in 19. Trust me, that long snapper is the most important spot. Yeah, so. like I was so <laughs> – Oh, if anybody's watching this, they're like, hey, hey, no, no, I, I know he's part of this too. And it matters. It absolutely matters. <laughs> um, but these are the positional players they brought in. Let's start linebacker, right? They brought in six so far. Um, I just want to start from, from the strategic view of zooming out. How do you feel? Like, how do you feel about this group coming in? I feel really good about it. You know, I think um, you guys mentioned in a previous show, I think there's a good 
range of, of, of age groups, you know, I think um, th that actually does a good job in terms of uh, looking at it, you know, more holistically in terms of who is going to get playing time or what's your future going to look like, what's the plan for you, what's the plan for your development. So I think that was smart on, on their uh, behalf. Um, I, I've been very vocal in the Discord. I'm, I was very excited when we got Jaheim Thomas. Yeah. I think he is vital. Um, he's a veteran of this defense. He's a veteran of, you know, playing college football. He was uh, really good at Cincinnati. He was Arkansas's leading tackler in our, uh, SEC West. He had his best game versus Alabama. You know, look at our third game this year. That That's definitely helpful. Um, but also, I think he can help get the younger guys in the right spots to, you know, see them be successful. Um, and then when you look at what we bring in, you know, I'm – I'm of the opinion, at least moving forward, uh, especially after some of the things we saw last year, that if you can get a guy, especially a guy that can elevate maybe the athleticism or the room, take them and let the spring sort it out. You know, I, I, from what I understand, we can take more scholarship guys uh, going into the spring than the roster would let us going into the fall. And so uh, I wasn't thinking that this portal season was going to be what hit us, but I think we're going to see a number of people leave after the spring. And I think those are going to be the people who through just pure, you know, crucible of practice, of, you know, training, of, of, of being pushed by the staff, I think those are the people that you, you don't really want to see next year. I think those are the people that wouldn't really fit into what we're trying to do moving forward. And uh, bringing in, you know, six liners that all, for the most part, elevate the athleticism in the room, um, elevate the skill in the room, elevate the knowledge, elevate the experience in the room, you know, I think that that's, a, that's a overall uh, a good thing. Yeah, I – I think that's a tough thing for a coaching staff. And I definitely, you come from an athletic family. Your dad's played, you played lacrosse. Um, like, so you've been in locker rooms, you, you know, coaches, I feel like it puts coaches in a tough spot where you could have an underclassman who isn't ready to play, but you think in two years or a year or two, he could really develop into a guy. And then you bring in a portal guy. You can, you risk taking off that younger player, you know, cause you can't play him right now, but he's going to transfer. If he doesn't play, it just puts coaching staffs in a really tough spot. And I, I definitely agree with your point. If you can get talent, get talent, right? That's the name of the game. But, man, does it put coaches, in my opinion, in a really tough spot in some of these decisions managing egos. It does. But, you know, I think one way to think about it is that's that's their literal job. You know, I mean, that's what they're paid to do. Um, and, you know, one thing to think about, too, is that, look, the key is honesty. If a coach is honest with a player, then there's nothing to fear because what will happen is the player will be honest with him and he'll tell him right where he's at. Mm -hmm. Look, coach, I don't know if this is the right thing for me anymore. I'm not sure if it's the right thing. You know what? Hey, great. Great. That helps us out because now we know that that's not the person that we want on our team. And, you know, unfortunately, it, it is it is that way, especially with NIL and the way things are going now. You know, I think uh, – uh, but, but what, I, what I genuinely think, I think that this staff is very good, at least from what I've seen, at explaining to players, hey, look, this is our vision. This is our plan for you. This is what it's going to look like, right? Maybe it's not exactly what you thought, but, you know, um, one thing I can also kind of think about is – you know, this is a coaching staff that's got a lot of experience. Hey, we've been here before. We've been in your shoes. We know what you're thinking. You know, um, th you're an 18, 19 year old, right? You're, you're still learning. You're still figuring it out. Trust us because we will put you in the best position to be successful. And if that means, hey, this year you might be, you know, only getting 15, 20 snaps a game, that's probably the best thing for you. You know, and just because you think you can play at an Indiana, that's not going to help your development. You know, that's not going to help you get to the NFL. It's only going to help you play faster, which is fine if that's your goal. But if your goal is longer term than that, you have to longer term. And so I think that's what maybe the staff is conveying. I could be accrediting a lot more <laughs> to the staff than, than they deserve, but that's that's how, I, that's how I would do it, and that's what I think they're doing. Too. Now, I think the staff deserves – they've earned a lot of credit, quite frankly. Luke Fickle has a lot of cachet for a reason. Um, what were your thoughts on Tacky Curtis committing? So he's the last of this group of linebackers to commit uh, – Huge, huge 2023 recruit, went to USC, Wisconsin was right there with him. Um, hey, kind of where do you see him fitting into a defense like this? If you if you put thought to that, like he just committed him. Yeah. And B, is it surprising to you that he would commit to a place with five other transfer linebackers coming in? Uh, no, um, because and I, I think because he's a competitor, I don't think that that's something that he would probably put a lot of thought into. Um, you know, I, he probably thinks I'm going to come in and start. You know, I mean, that's everybody's every good player's um, mentality. Excuse me. And um but, you know, when I when I look at him, you know, I, I again, I've invoked in the discord. He was not my first pick for a linebacker transfer. But the reality is we got all the guys that <laughs> I wanted. So, you know, why, why not add Tech Curtis, too? That's that's a good that's a good uh, addition. Um, you know, I think when I when I watch Tech Curtis play um, and then when I watch his college you know film more, um, he looks like a linebacker that was a perfect fit for what we used to run with Jim Leonard. You know, he looks like kind of like a, a, a smaller Leo Chanel 
maybe maybe a little less athletic, maybe more athletic. He looked kind of like a deer in headlights at times this year at USC, and maybe that's just because he's a freshman. But, um, you know, he looked like that kind of mold. And so, you know, where we use him will be interesting because when you watch his high school film, he was kind of like almost like either a deep linebacker, yeah. overhang safety or like a box safety or something kind of just said, hey, you go get the ball. Like, they, they, he didn't really do anything other than go chase whoever had the ball. So, um, I'm, you know, I'll be curious to see how they use him if they if they put him in that dollar position like what, you know, Justin was talking about. I mean, he could be, you know, that. But but his reads were so simple in high school that it's just I don't really know where he – well, they'll use him. But, um, but again, you know, he's he's a hard hitter. I think he's someone, he's someone that I'd want to see in the game versus Iowa. Not sure if I'd want to see him in the game versus USC. Um, so, you know, we'll see kind of how that all lines up, but, um, yeah, I'm excited. We got him. I'm excited for the competition. He's got good attitude and I think he makes the room better. Yeah. You're not wrong in that high school film. I mean, I talked to his high school coach. I had him on the show last year and they were like, he's just so good. We just basically lined him up and said, go get ball. Yeah. And he did, right? Like he blew yeah. up everything, but because of that, it's hard to really figure out like, okay, is he, how is he in zone coverage, right? How is he mm -hmm. with his eyes and his reads? Because he didn't have to do it. He was just too athletic. Yeah. Um, I, here's, here's a question I have for you. So we, we talked a lot about linebackers. Uh, you mentioned a couple there, uh, definitely Thomas. Is there another guy in that group that when he committed, you watch film or you're like, I, I really like that guy. Is there yeah. another linebacker in that group? I'm really glad you asked this because this guy's not getting enough um, pub, in my opinion. Uh, Sebastian Cheeks from North Carolina. I watched his high school film. He's basically if Braylon Allen stayed playing linebacker is, is what I saw on him. I mean, he's an athlete. He played all the positions for, for Evanston. It's not too far from, from where I am. I'm familiar with that level of football. They, you know, that guy's a, an athletic freak. And I think he's going to do be tremendous in, in the middle as a middle linebacker on this defense. I think, um, you know, he's six, three, what was it like two two thirty something like that. Um, yeah. And he, he got stuck in a tough situation where he was behind a couple guys who were really good at North Carolina. Um, so he didn't really get an opportunity there the defensive coordinator got fired this last season, you know, so he was looking for a new role closer to home for him. I'm really excited for what he can bring. I think he's a different type of athlete. Like he's got that same kind of punch that the tech at Curtis has, but I think with just, you know, a, a hair more athleticism, I'm, I'm super excited to see him develop over the next few years. You think he redshirts this year? You know, I, I can't remember if he already redshirted or not. Um, uh, I actually wanted to make a comment on, I know on your video, you said about uh, Delancey coming in as a quarterback or a cornerback. He played his first three years, but he hadn't redshirted. So I think that's where the confusion was right, from the one, one, year one or two. Because if he redshirted, then he could, I guess, two, but um, but he has played three years. Uh, but going back to uh, Sebastian, I think he's a guy that, that will not be a feature guy until next year. Um, he might maybe see the field a little bit, maybe like an Allegro or, or something like that. But, um, but I, I, I think um, – for next year, I think we got a couple guys who's got more experience. Um, you know, like for example, Jaheen Thomas is going to play. Um, I think Tackett will play for what it's worth. I don't really know where, but but I think, and then I think, you know, I think you'll see um, even a guy like um, Galvin come in uh, maybe on some you know, more passing down. So he's got to drop into coverage a little bit more. So, you know, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see kind of how that all winds up. But I, again, I think Sebastian Cheeks is a guy who I'm really excited about. I think they kind of did him dirty in the transportal ranking. He went from like a 94 prospect to like 86 or something like that, which is, I don't, that's beyond me. <laughs> the portal rankings are weird how they do it. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, I, I want to get, hit, go back to your point of playing and who's playing. Cause obviously last year we saw Christian Allegro. We saw the rise uh, the beginning of that, what he could be right. Uh, Daryl Peterson is going to be back. Leon Lowry. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about is another transfer coming in who I really like John Pius, the other transfer. How, where do you think if, if we're running, let's say a two four five next year or a three three five, like who do you think is starting week one? I know I'm putting you on the spot here, and it, it, we haven't even seen spring football yet, so it's not fair, and we're not holding you to it. But like, where does your guys? We don't, we don't even know who's going to be here, you know. In the no, fall. it's true. But, like, you're, so uh, gone, but no, but uh, but no, I mean, I think I think really what this tells me is that they're looking to have more than one line of depth. I think it's more, you know, substitutions and and more, and I'm hoping. You know, between drive issues where we get caught subbing mid drive, I, you know, I don't want to get caught in that situation necessarily. But I think that, you know, if you have guys that you feel confident rolling out, you know, every other drive, I think that's going to be huge for our defense because it can keep us fresh all year. Um, so I, I feel good in that regard. I think they're going to want to play a lot of people. Um, but in terms of starting, you know, I think you're going to see a lot of honestly the same guys we saw last year. I don't think it's going to be too different. I think you're going to see, you know, James Thompson on the line. I think you'll probably see. 
um, like a Kurt Neal. Um, did is Pius? Did he graduate? Pius is gone. I yeah, so Pius is gone. So you'll, you'll probably see some Kurt Neal. I think you'll see um, the guy we got from Albany. Located. Uh, yeah. Um, he and he. You know the thing I like about him. He's he's so quick in short. Air, small. I mean, he can like all right through the line. Like I couldn't even get a hand on him. Um, but I worry about him is, you know, a game like in Iowa where they're just going to try to wash him down. I, I don't think he'd be able to, yeah, I don't think he'd hold the line there. But I think you can put him on, you know, the end of a, you know, almost in a defensive end spot in that game and keep the linebackers on the field and he can cause some damage there. But in terms of, you know, passing downs, getting after the quarter, be a great rotational. And when you look at the linebackers, I think you're going to see Jaheim Thomas, Cheney, if Cheney sticks around, probably are going to be the starters. And I think you're going to see a Peterson – uh, Pius, you're going to see Lowry. I think those are going to be kind of the mainstays just because they've got the most experience. And then I think you're going to see the other guys rotate in behind that. Yeah, I think Badger fans, were, and I've done this because Justin, Justin and Rajiv and I were actually talking about starters next year. We're already talking about the transfer portal guys. And you kind of forget. Oh, like, I forgot about Piotrowski. I mean, he's going to be in there. Choyski, Chaney, mm-hmm. Peterson. Like, I think Peterson's a guy who can anchor the edge on base. Like mm-hmm. in first down, he can set the edge. He can play run. And then you bring a guy like Lowry or Pius or someone like that to get after the quarterback mm-hmm. in third and seven who has a little more juice. I think, and that way they're both fresher. Like Peterson would look better if he had to play seventy percent of the snaps he did last year. They all got worn down. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and think about it like this: Imagine you know all of a sudden now it's third and ten, and you can get in a line with you know, um, oh my gosh, I keep forgetting our uh, Lee, uh, Elijah Hill. You can get in, you know, Pius and Lowry. Uh, you can get a tack of Curtis in there, you know. And they're fresh because they haven't played that drive yet, you know. So now you got a bunch of fresh guys who could just get after them. Um, I mean, that to me, that's a good thing. Kind of reminds me of when Ohio State had the Rushman package, where yep. they would put in their their DNs after the quarterback, you know. And I think that in a in a in a more streamlined vein, I think that's what Pickle's going for. Well, I'll say this: um, there, there's going there, it never works perfectly, right? Not everybody hits. There's going to be some growing pains. But the amount of times we get beaten to the edge next year just because our linebackers can't quite get there, they can't quite close that angle, I think drops dramatically with this group. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. You can see it in the in uh, in um, James Thomas's highlights. Yeah. There's a couple of plays where he strung the, the running back all the way to the sideline. So that's going to be that's going to be huge for our defense. I agree. All right, we're going to take one more quick break, come back, and get Curtis's thoughts on the rest of the portal additions. Uh, obviously, getting a running back, receiver, cornerback, uh, quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke. We're going to talk about that next on Locked On Badgers. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show uh, over at FanDuel. I talk about FanDuel a lot because that's where we go on Locked On to make all of our bets, spreads, parlays, futures, teasers. It's all there, whether you're betting NFL, NBA. The playoffs are coming up for, for football, obviously. College basketball is going on. Uh, it's a great time to get onto FanDuel. Plus, new customers with a $5 bet. Um, right now, you're guaranteed $150 in bonus bets, guaranteed win or lose. That's $150 back, win or lose. And you can take that money and put it like I do on the Niners to win the Super Bowl. I know there's some dissenters out there, but Brock Purdy is that dude. Go ahead and do it. Um, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Um, make it your first stop of the day for all your sports betting needs. All right, let's bring um, Curtis back in here. And as always, man, really do appreciate you stopping by. I, I know you're in the Discord. Uh, we put your Twitter on there. Is there anywhere else that you post or anything else that you got going on? Uh, quite frankly, no. I mean, I do a lot of um, my Badger stuff, just kind of keep it, you know, low key. Um, you know, you, I'm involved in a lot of, you know, kind of behind the scenes stuff with the um, athletic department and my family's involved, every involved there. So, um, you know, I tend to be more in, in that area. Um, but in terms of my Badger fandom, I mean, you know, this is really the first platform that I've had the opportunity to share my thoughts on. So, you know, I'm excited to, to get it going. No, it's awesome. It's always good to have you on, man. You bring really good insight and you think of things a little differently, which is always great. Um, let's talk the rest of this class. So we, we hit linebackers. Uh, we talked about Elijah Hill, the defensive lineman. What were your thoughts on Van Dyke? Yeah. So, you know, watching him, I think he's, he's got all the potential to make this offense sing but it's between the ears, you know, and I don't know. I haven't watched them enough. I haven't watched all the Miami games through. I've watched a lot of the highlights. Uh, I watched the dairy raid breakdown on him, you know, uh, go follow that channel too. That's another great one to watch, but um, he's got all the tools, you know, that Longo is looking for. And I, more so than Mordecai had um, Mordecai to me, you know, had that mental toughness down. And, and he's a guy that like, I wish I could take his brain and plug it into every court effect we've ever had, yeah. you know, yeah. but um but in terms of Tyler Van Dyke, I mean, he's got the talent. You know, one of the things Longo talked about, he had a, um, uh, he 
there's a couple hour long uh, lectures he gave where he talks about what his offense the last few years back when he was at UNC. And one of the things he talks about is um, he needs a quarterback that can that can make every single pass. That's one of the things he talks about. And it's like, yeah, okay, and it's easy to say, you know, get a quarterback to make every single pass. But that's not actually super common. And not all the times are those quarterbacks the guys that are the highest rated, which I kind of found shocking until I started following our current quarterback recruiting. Um, and so you look at Van Dyke, I mean, he can hit every single deep throw. He can hit the short throws. He can hit them, you know, behind the line of scrimmage. He can hit every single throw. Um, and I think he's a more competent deep ball thrower from just a skill set. So, again, I think he's got all the potential. It's just can we unlock it between the ears? Um, and I think if you see a season like he had, I think we're going to do phenomenal next year. I think if you see, you know, some remnants of when he was playing under um, – uh, the you know two years ago and, and and even some last year, I think we're gonna probably struggle like we've always struggled. So it's just, you know, what what, you know, what 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 can we do to get him mindset ready to win games? It, it, the interesting thing with Van Dyke, man, I'm curious what you think on this one. He feels like a guy who, if you have the right pieces around him, is going to be a better quarterback than Mordecai. But if you don't have the right pieces, he could be a lesser version of Mordecai because he can't scramble as well. He can't create as well. Like the offensive line has to be has to keep do a better job of keeping him upright. Um, you, may, you maybe need a little bit of res- vertical receiver threats for Van Dyke to utilize his deep arm. And if you have those pieces, I think he can be better than Mordecai. But I'm not sure if we have those pieces. Uh, I'm curious what you think of that. Well, I think that actually, too, stems from the run game. I mean, I think you need to have a confident run game in order to make that work. And 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 just the threat of a quarterback run. I mean, if, if, if we, you know, if, if, if he has to, if he's the whole offense, you know, if, if, for example, like last year, you know, we had Braylon Allen go down and Chez go down. And, and shout out to Aker and Yacomelli, man, those guys did admirably, but they weren't going to win the games by themselves on, on the ground and everybody knew it. So it kind of made it hard for, for Mordecai to, you know, uh, when everybody was dropping into coverage and he had to kind of figure it out. Now he was able to scramble, but uh, you know, that, that made it very difficult. I think, I think with, you know, going into next season, the thing I'm the most excited for is actually our run game. You know, what are we going to do with Chaz now year two in the system? You know, we're bringing back a lot of our offensive line. I know we lost some guys, some depth pieces to the portal, but we're bringing back, you know, a good portion of the starting reps and perhaps an upgrade at center. You know, we'll see how that plays out. But um, you get that, and now you get, you know, um, a Ches Malusi coming back, you know, for his his final run here. And you get, um, you know, out of the portal ad um, and running back that I also am drawing a blank on his name, and I don't see it on – oh, there is Toby Walker. Walker. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's the power back, and he's more of a power back that runs this system, unlike, unlike Braylon, you know. And then you got those three stud freshmen coming in too. I mean, like, that run game is going to be nasty. And it's going to be so much more, I think, athletic and more and more speed focused than it was this year. And I think that will allow, you know, for for you know the threat of play action, the threat of the, you know the read the read option to give um, Dyke some more options. And again, you know, he he had crazy numbers at at uh, mi, mi, uh, oh my gosh, put up crazy numbers in Miami. It's not like he had, you know, a crazy offensive line there ever. And and you saw what they did to Texas A&M. They absolutely shredded that defense. And that defense was never the problem. At Texas A&M. So, you know, I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, he's got the potential. I think he doesn't necessarily need to be as mobile as Mordecai if we have, you know, our offensive line and our run game humming. Um, but more pieces doesn't hurt either. You know, I'm never going to say no to a, a couple stud receivers or anything like that. Yeah, nobody would in Wisconsin, man. Um, let me finish up here. If this is what the portal class ends up being, and listen, it, it, this is going to be pretty close to what it is. They might still add another body, certainly their spots they could. Is this, in your opinion, a successful portal offseason for this Badger staff? Or are they missing something key here that they just couldn't quite pull in? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think you could always do better. Um, I mean, there's always places you can improve and there's always more you can bring. Me personally, you know, I was I was hoping to see at least one, you know, number one caliber receiver, um, you know, whether that uh, Banks, the, the guy from, you know, Wake Forest, or, I mean, Evan Stewart's still out there on him, but, you know, he's still out there. Um, you know, I was hoping to see one guy like that. I think, I think Brian Smith, you know, uh, I, I follow him probably, uh, I would say he's the most unbiased out of everybody we have on here. Um, yep. and I think he's right when he says we need, you know, a, an elite receiver. I think we have potential in the room. Um, so I'm not going to try to throw those guys short. I think if we go into next season without another receiver, I think we'll have success. I don't know if we'll have natural title success, but I think we'll have success. Um, but then, you know, when you look at, um, the only other thing I would want to add is I know they brought in the, the Texas uh, defensive lineman transfer as well. He's a younger guy, another guy that needs to develop over time, but he's going to, he'd provide some depth and, and, and definitely, you know, something to look forward to down the line. Um, but 
kind of going off the whole transfer portal in general, I don't think you build a team through the portal. I think that the staff is 100% right. You need to build that through organic recruiting. And I don't think you build a D-line through the portal either. I don't. I think you have to build that from the ground up, and that's going to take time. And unfortunately, that's kind of the where we're at right now. It's going to take a year or two to see return on uh, Willer or return on Johnson or return on Jamal Howard from last year. Take a little bit of time. Um, I think that we'll get there. I just think it might not be next year. Let me ask you this, and I want to finish up here. This is something that I've been thinking about a little bit. They've certainly come in today being the staff, Luke Fickle and, and that recruiting staff, say we need to build this from the high school ranks. Exactly what you just said. Like mm -hmm. we're not going to build it through the portal. Two cycles in, you've brought in 13, 14 guys this year, a big chunk last year. Does that feel almost like an antiquated way to build a team in a way? Like every, I think a lot of coaches think like that, but a lot of coaches came up when the portal wasn't what it is now. And maybe it needs to be more of a mix going forward. Maybe this is more the norm. Yeah, I think it, it, it's different for different levels of, 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 of team. I think at a Wisconsin level and what the staff has proven, you know, from their own recruiting chops and the actually the ability just to retain people in general. Um, I think they've proven that Wisconsin is a program that you can – add some pieces where we have holes through the portal um, to kind of help shore up the team going into the next season. Like if you're missing a starting player at a position, you can grab someone maybe from a lower portal, right? Um, but ultimately your team is going to be built on the guys you bring recruit and what Michigan, I think, showed us last night. That's what Washington showed us last night. Yeah. You know, they're a team that they got to build guys from the ground up too. And, um, you know, they've proven that we have a right culture and you, and you develop internally uh, that you can have success. Um, I was listening to one of the Michigan podcasters talking about their Michigan team and, and the star rankings, you know, Michigan, they, they have, they have a, they're, you know, they're mostly poor star players on that roster, but the difference between them and in Alabama, you know, Alabama gets five stars and high four stars. And these are guys that are one, two, three, and gone either yeah. to the portal or to the league. The difference is Michigan has guys that are fourth and fifth year seniors. They're two years older. If you look at the, the development the human body goes through of two years at that age group, you are looking at grown men playing guys who are athletic freaks. The difference is these grown men have had two more years of experience development and weight training to go on to their bodies and play these guys. Now, that's not taking anything away from the Alabamas or the Ohio States or anything like that, but it levels the playing field. It gives you the ability to have a team that can come in and compete at that level. Cincinnati got close to that with Fickle back in 2021. The difference is you're dealing with Cincinnati caliber athletes, not Wisconsin, you know, potentially Michigan caliber athletes. You saw what could happen if you use a Michigan caliber athlete in that same type scenario. So I think that's what Fickle's going for. And I think yesterday for me was proof positive of concept that yes, we can do that at Wisconsin. We can get to that level, especially in the 12, you know, 12 team playoff era. Um, and, I, and I'm excited for the future. I think the moves they're making are the right ones. I think it's going to take longer than maybe people initially thought or wanted, but I think that that's okay. You know, sometimes good things take time. Uh, I, I sent a picture in the Discord the other day, um, yesterday, of the score forty nine to eleven. We beat Minnesota, We beat Michigan forty nine to eleven at the Big House. Those freshmen are seniors on the team that just won the national championship. That's crazy. So, think about that. I don't know if I want to. It, it, <laughs> going back to a glory day in a way, but no, it's like, a really good point though. Like with you recruit the right guys and then you keep them on the roster and develop them the right way, which goes back to your Ben Herbert point too. You have to have the right pieces behind mm -hmm. the scenes to develop those guys in the right way, which I, I feel confident we do right now. Um, Curtis, thank you as always, man. This has been great. We've already kept you for more than 30 minutes, um, but great insight as always. He is Curtis over on the discord as well. Um, more coming up this week for sure. We got a couple interviews uh, with uh, recruits dad, hopefully coming up. That's going to be a fun one. And then somebody from the staff, I think is well coming up. So, on Wisconsin, and we'll talk later.